Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to find the true dip whenever you're given the apparent dip of a plane as well as some other data. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at this three-dimensional model. What I have here is a three-dimensional model of what a plane would do if it travels through a body. So this green line here is the plane. Ignore the yellow for just a minute. And this is just like if you were to take a chunk out of like a mountain or something, and you could witness this plane traveling through this chunk. So what I'm going to first of all take a look at is recognizing that this top face and this bottom face are both horizontal planes. Okay? So imagine that this is like the cliff side that we see at the side of a road cut or something. So we would witness that a plane is traveling at an angle relative to the horizontal at a cliff. And we want to know what the actual dip of this plane is. So first of all, what we can recognize is that this plane has a strike, right? That's the direction that it travels in the horizontal plane. And what we witness is that this line here is the strike. And we know that the dip direction has to be perpendicular to the strike, so it has to be this one. This is the true dip. So if we could find this face, then we could figure out what this angle measurement is and figure out what the dip angle is. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen in the field all too often. In fact, almost never. What we do have to witness is this face. We almost always see an apparent dip face. We can find any cut from a um, body of rock that has a plane in it, and we can measure the apparent dip. And if we measure this particular angle, what we're going to witness is 19 degrees. But we, this isn't our actual dip, because this isn't a right angle right here. This is clearly not. And so whenever we take a measurement of this, this is going to be what we call the apparent dip. So the question then becomes, how do we find the true dip if we know the apparent dip and some other data? Most of the time, we're going to know the strike value, and we're going to know the apparent dip. So how do we find the true dip based off of that? Well, there's four different methods. The first switch that I'm going to be talking about is stereographic projection. You can also use trigonometry. There's also alignment diagrams and stereographic projection. Stereographic projection is something that I'll get into in a later chapter. So the first thing that I'm going to try and do is explain orthographic projection. So the basic idea behind orthographic projection is that we are going to trace out what we need and physically measure it off of the paper. So the first thing we do is we trace out this top triangle. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I have this drawn out, what I need to do is I need to now consider how am I supposed to figure out the true dip if I am given the apparent dip, okay? So the way that this works is that I know that this line is gonna be the strike. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that on here, that this is the strike. I know that this is the true dip direction. And I know that this is the apparent dip direction. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we do. I know that the apparent dip is going to be 19 degrees. I've already measured this in advance, and this is 19 degrees. So imagine if I were to fold this face up into this plane. I would then draw a 19 degree angle between here and another line. So let me just go ahead and do that. So now that I've drawn this out, notice that I've got this is a 19 degree angle. The question is, where am I supposed to stop? I can just keep drawing this line forever, and where do I connect it? The answer is that I need to have a right angle 
from this diagonal face towards the line. And the reason that is, is because if I were to fold this side upwards, then this would be a right angle to this diagonal side because I'm folding it up. Okay, so now I need to do the same thing for this side. The only problem is I don't know what this angle is and so I can't draw this triangle. However, what I do know is this distance D right here. The height of this block is the same for both of these triangles, right? This height from, for this triangle is the same as this height for this triangle. All right, and so I am going to label this distance D right there. And so I also know that there has to be that same distance D here. And it's also got to be a right angle from this side. So let me go ahead and draw that. All right, so this is what we have. We have an orthographic projection. We've traced out this top triangle. We folded up both this side and this side. And now we can physically measure from this paper what the true dip actually is. Let me go ahead and do that. On here, I get that this is about 25 degrees. which isn't too far off from what I have on here because I physically measured it on here as well and this is 22 degrees. There's always going to be some bit of error whenever you are actually physically drawing this thing onto a piece of paper and so expect your answers to vary by one to two maybe three degrees in my case. So as you can see doing this method kinda sucks. It, it takes a while you aren't exactly precise but the thing that's nice about doing this method is it gives you an idea of where these numbers come from and what you're actually doing. So if you can understand how to draw it, you probably understand the method. The next method I'm going to talk to you guys about is that of trigonometry, and this is arguably the easiest one. So there's a derivation to prove this particular formula, but I'll save that for another video. I'll link that in the description. But the formula to figure out the true dip is this tangent of delta equals the tangent of alpha over the sine of beta. And you're probably wondering, what in the world are all these angles? What is alpha, what is beta, what is delta? Well, delta is the true dip Alpha is the plunge of the apparent dip. In this case, that's 19 degrees. And beta is the angle between the strike of the plane and the trend of the apparent dip. Okay, so these are what all the different symbols mean. And in our particular case, we are trying to solve for the true dip. We're try trying to solve for dip, di excuse me, trying to solve for delta. What we have is we have alpha, which is the plunge of the apparent dip. So we can say that tangent of delta is equal to the tangent of 19 degrees divided by the sine and the angle between the strike of the plane and the trend of the apparent dip is going to be this angle right here. And this angle happens to be looks like about 53 degrees.
Okay, so if we plug this in, and then we can use our calculator to actually figure out what this answer is. So if we plug this into our calculator, we are going to get the following answer. So we have the tangent of 19 degrees divided by the sine of 53 degrees. And that gives us 0.43114. And if we take the inverse tangent of that number, we get 23.3 degrees. So this answer is pretty close to what we've gotten up here. It's also pretty close to what I've physically measured on my block model. And so what we're going to have to conclude is that no method is perfect because there's always a certain degree of measurement. I had to measure this 53 degrees, I had to measure this 19 degrees. There's always something that can be just a little bit off, and as such there's going to be some degree of error. In this case I get 23.3 degrees. And this was probably a lot simpler method than physically drawing everything out up here. So the third method I'm going to be teaching you about is that of alignment diagrams. What I have here is my structural geology lab notebook. And this is written by Roland Dubendorfer and Schiefelbein. This is the third edition. A further detailed bibliography can be found in the description. But here what we have is the alignment diagram provided by them. It may be difficult to see, but what we have here is we've got three columns. We've got one for true dip, one for apparent dip, and one for the angle between the strike and the apparent dip. We need two of these values in order to find the third. And so what we have is we have the angle between the strike and the apparent dip, and we have the apparent dip. So what you'll notice is that these are given in very strange increments, but that's how this thing works. Each one has a different incremental system. So if I, are to, if I am to trace this out, I can find 53 degrees on here. Well, 53 degrees on this column over here, angle between the strike and the apparent dip. That's right about here. Then for the apparent dip, I know that this is about 19 degrees. That's right about here. And if I take my ruler and I match up these two dots, this will point me in the direction of the true dip, which is this value right here, which on this one comes out to be, let's see, looks about 23 degrees. So that's how an alignment diagram works. Also very straightforward, very simple. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, please leave a like and a subscribe if you found this video in any way helpful. Thanks again.